Hi guys, today we're going to talk about pretext. Now, normal people who aren't attorneys don't use the word pretext in everyday conversation. It's legal jargon, but it's legal jargon that can make or break your case. In EEO speak, pretext basically means a false excuse that your employer gives for their discriminatory actions. It's intended to cover up their discriminatory intent. Now in plain English, pretext means bullshit excuse. EEOC is really good at recognizing pretext. Of course, even when they see it, they can't just assume that's what's going on. You have to call it out yourself and show some evidence that's what your employer is up to. Fortunately for us, pretext really isn't that hard to see or call out. One way to show it is to prove that your employer's reasons for a particular action change over time. My boss delayed signing off on my reasonable accommodations request as long as she possibly could. She requested three letters from my doctor. The third time I pushed back, asking for a template or guidance that would tell my doctor what her letter needed to say. And it became one new request after another. The last time she demanded that I submit a new request, it was because I capitalized the word use. The caps were for emphasis because I wanted to use my existing telework agreement and flexible schedule to address my medical needs as reasonable accommodation. My boss complained that the all caps meant I was yelling at her and she refused to act on my request until I removed them. The diversity manager emailed me on my boss's behalf, letting me know that I needed to resubmit my request. And my boss's email complaining about the yelling was attached to it. By the end of the day, I submitted a new request. I sent it with a cover letter that said I wasn't changing my request anymore. I'd already changed everything I was willing to in light of my medical needs, which were still urgent and unaddressed. That cover letter turned out to be great evidence. It really got the judge's attention at my hearing. The AJ decided to ask a few questions of his own. I didn't have to do anything except attach that cover letter to my request for reasonable accommodation. Sometimes changes in your employer's interpretation of past events can signal pretext. NASA tried to use an interpersonal problem that I'd had with a contractor employee a few years earlier. So I kept a file on the incident. My file included copies of a letter of apology that I'd written at the time. And it included a letter from my boss to me telling me I shouldn't have apologized because I did nothing wrong. A lot of people had problems with that particular employee. In fact, my boss praised my excellent teamwork and my ability to communicate effectively under difficult circumstances. And when the judge saw that file, he didn't want to hear any more about my past interpersonal problems from NASA. It was off limits. Changing requirements can also signal pretext. At one point, my boss tried to claim that I couldn't do telework. The essential elements of my job were analyzing complex engineering problems, working across disciplines to solve those problems, and I had some administrative duties, like managing the budgets and resources for our department. I had to attend some meetings every week, and there were some types of problems that were best solved in person. So I couldn't have justified 100% telework, but certainly most of what I did could be done at home. So to try to justify denying me telework as an accommodation, my boss added some non-essential duties to my plate, like being the official greeter of VIP visitors or being her designated chart flipper in meetings that I didn't normally attend. Changing the rules can also be an indicator of pretext. All the conditions that my boss imposed when I actually tried to use the accommodations that she'd given me on paper were just insane. If I requested telework and email, I should have asked for it in person. If I asked for it in person, I should have called. If I called, <laughs> I should have emailed. So I documented her changing rules. It told a story that she would have done anything to deny accommodating me. And finally, twisted interpretations of official policy can signal pretext. When everything else failed, my boss retreated to official NASA policy. NASA policy says that telework has to be for the benefit of NASA. By the time this came up in my hearing, there had been enough pretext that the AJ himself was suspicious. He asked my boss how she could consider something an accommodation when I could only use it for NASA's benefit. <laughs> so call out the pretext one point at a time. And eventually, you might just shoot down all your employer's alleged non-discriminatory reasons, leaving room for only one possible explanation that your employer's discrimination was intentional. And that will win you your case. Bye, smart.